Okay, so I have deleted this five times now and restarted. It has been so long since I've deleted and restarted. I am not sure why I'm struggling with this one so much. <laughs> Maybe it's because I am just have this thought in my head that people are gonna twist it in a way that it was not intended, but <laughs> I'm so sure that this is what I need to share today. And I'm also confident that Anything we say can be twisted if somebody wants to. So I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit with this, that he did put this in my heart, and that those who are in a position to hear it are going to hear it in the way that God intended. And um, those that aren't, we'll just let the Lord show them in a way that they can receive it. I am going to tell you that it is time to start writing in our Bibles. No, not, not the journaling and the doodling and all that, which is fine and well and good. But I'm telling you that many, 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 many believers need to pick up a red pen. And I'm going to tell you today, if you've never done anything like this, it will change your life. It will change your ability to read the Bible and your ability to understand it because there was a dividing line in all of history. And it came, yes, when Jesus Christ came to this earth as a baby. But the dividing line I'm talking about was the line that was drawn when he got when he rose from the dead. We read our Bible in two two sections. We have an old covenant and a new covenant, Old Testament and a New Testament. And a lot of people will just give out small versions of the New Testament and they hand it out and we expect people to understand what's going on here. We read the red and when we read the red, people mean read Jesus's words and do what he says. I think anybody who knows me knows there is no higher name there is no higher one than jesus in my life that god in the flesh given for us can be no greater gift but i mean this with complete reverence and i do believe that the lord wants us to see this that it's not the words in red that we put in red that he wants us to see the red line the one that he wants us to see that he's calling us to put in there is the dividing line between all of time and space from when Jesus lived and all that came before him to when he died and what changed. Here's what I mean. If you, um, I know most of my videos and most of what I do is speaking to people who uh, go to church, who know the Lord, or who don't go to church but love the Lord, okay? I, I'm clear that that is who most of who I'm speaking to, although I am praying that by the grace of God, he'd be able to use me to people who haven't been there. But it is where my lingo goes because most of what I've grown up with and what I read has to do with people who have, have been exposed to it. So that said, the word righteousness, We've heard it. We've Many people have preached about it. Some have preached very well. I don't mean to discount that. But the word righteousness and what it signifies, we many times have gotten it wrong. Okay? And I just need to tell you as quickly as I possibly can because the clock is ticking and these are meant to be quick. <laughs> is that righteousness? Um, I had a really wise woman um, lead our mom time group if you're watching years ago and she said righteousness or justification is think of it this way just as if you've never sinned okay just as if you've never sinned so what Jesus or what the whole Old Testament is about is righteousness it's about how we can basically get in a right standing with God is what the goal of all these um of all these sacrifices and all the laws and all the do's and all the don'ts that many people now are going, are trying to twist and change, uh, saying they change with the time. Fun fact, although the times change, God never does and his heart for us never does, okay? So what do we do here? I know that even those who have not been able to rationalize what they see with what they read and understand what they've been taught and it doesn't seem to line up, have walked away, and I understand that. But my hope is to bring us all back to the understanding that we've, we've just missed. When Jesus walked on this earth, he preached as a man, as God in the flesh, but as a man under the law. Okay, the law is the Jewish law they're talking about. Um, 
we know it familiar with the Ten Commandments, but I believe it's 613 rabbinical laws, Jewish laws that they had to follow everywhere from how long their hair could be and sideburns to where they could use the bathroom in the camp. I mean, just crazy. Crazy amounts of of laws, right? But a lot of people thought that that was their goal on this earth was to do it perfectly. And then that would make them righteous. That's righteous in their eyes, right? Well, what we don't realize is that the law, all of those, all the things that men try to do was never given so that men could be right with, with God. It was not its intention. The intention of the law, as the Bible says, was to show us that we never could. Excuse me, something in my eye. To show us, oh, we're just gonna ignore this, that we can never be right with the Lord by doing anything that we think makes us righteous. Romans 3, if you do not read the, law, read the Bible and have context in its entirety, you can get really confused. And I'm gonna tell you, I used to, pastors would preach chunks of it and I just was like, Ah, oh, oh, my head, what's going on? I don't understand. And then I got to read it for myself and talk to people and ask questions and it all made sense. And so I just wanna share this real quick. We're gonna use the book of Romans as um, the best example that I have for you. The book of Romans is a letter written to the Romans by Paul, um, formerly known as Saul, okay? And you read the book of Romans he did not write it in chapters and send it to the church, or he did not write it over a course. We, he wrote it as one. So when we preach it in chapters, we're missing the whole big picture. If you read the book of Romans, chapters one, two, and the first part of three, it will blow your mind because you will say, there is no way I can do this. I can't be perfect. If my righteousness does not surpass those of the Pharisees, these are the ones who did everything according to the law. Um, everything. It says you can't can't be right with God. You can't spend eternity with him, right? But the red pen, guys, Romans 3, 19. It's where everything changes in the book of Romans. Now we know. Now we know. I have to just put this out there <laughs> that we say the truth. The truth shall set you free. But what was Jesus saying? It. He was saying to people who knew the law, who knew all the things that they thought they had to do to get right. And he's saying, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. There is something coming in his future that is going to change what they know in a way that will blow their ever loving minds. Romans 3.19, now we know that the law, whatever it says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. What the what? Guilty before God? We don't want to be guilty. <sighs> but Jesus, it says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. That is its purpose. But now, verse Chapter 3, verse 21, guys, red pen, underline it. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. That's most of the Old Testament, the first five books and the prophetic books that were written. So the righteousness of God is now apart from the law, being witnessed by the Old Testament and the people that lived it and wrote it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and for all who believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I want you to take this red pen and I want you to underline that. And then I want you to go through your Bible and I want you to find the word righteous. The Old Testament, all the promises for the righteous, they all have ifs associated with it. If you do this, then the righteous shall do this. If, they're all contingencies. I'm going to tell you that the contingency was fulfilled and the person of Jesus Christ. He says himself, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. And he said, none of it would pass away. None of it until it had been fulfilled. Now we live in a time of unmerited grace and favor that we've never lived in it before. And you are gonna have many believers that are still gonna wanna say, oh, we have such grace available. There's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ but they're going to throw the law on you and they're going to say one sin and you're not right with God or how can you do that? All that. 
I'm going to tell you, this red pen, this dividing line, his blood that was shed for us is our righteousness. We want to live holy lives, holy and blameless. It should be our goal on this earth to let his life shine through us so brightly that other people will want to see it. But it is not our job. In fact, it is so far from our job to throw the law at people who have been made righteous by the blood. So much to say on that. I'm just not going there. <laughs> Grab your red pen. Mark up your Bible. Show where the line is, Lord. You guys, the line is not between the Old and New Testament. The line comes when Jesus rose from the grave. When he declared us righteous, when he not only took our punishment on the cross, but then he rose from the grave and he said, it's it, it is finished. His part of this is finished. Our part, to know who we are and to believe him. Have a good one.